So really exciting news ahead for Cyberpunk 2077. It seems that CD Projekt Red is officially very busy at work on a lot of incoming updates, improvements, DLCs, as well as the next gen upgrade for the game. We have a lot of these informations coming in fresh from the lead quest designer as well as a few more developers working at the company and working on the game as we speak. It seems that the company's big focus right now is on working on multiple substantial changes and upgrades to the existing features of the game but we will also talk about some of the design decisions in the game and also some of the changes going forward that have been confirmed up until this point as always a thumbs up on the video would definitely help me a lot and let's jump right into it but starting things off with a pretty important question that i'm sure is on everybody's minds and that is why is cd project red being radio silent for so long and of course it seems that the company is definitely taking examples from developers who tackled problems in a similar way and the lead quest designer over at CD Projekt Red gave one of the examples Hello Games and the way they handled No Man's Sky. It definitely seems that CD Projekt Red is aiming for a similar route where they are a little bit more silent on what they are working on currently but they are definitely busy at work behind the scenes to prepare something very big for their game it's just that it takes a little bit longer to make that possible but once it is there, it's definitely going to make players much happier than if they were to just talk about it non-stop and just drag things out. He of course also went in to mention that he would have preferred to be a little bit more transparent on things, but since he is not the PR expert in the matter, it's not his decision to make. What we need to know is that there's definitely a lot of work being done behind the scenes right now with CD Projekt Red and a lot of stuff is being planned for Cyberpunk in order to improve it as much much as possible. Now another important question is in regards to what players can count on in terms of new updates from CD Projekt Red and the big takeaway here is that yeah the company is definitely not going to make any false promises, they definitely learned that lesson the first time around and they also don't want to make promises of new updates coming tomorrow for example only to then realize they need to postpone them because of issues arising along the way and this immediately makes me think of out writers for example because they essentially fell exactly into this trap so just because they aren't jumping us with a lot of new information right now specifically it doesn't mean that they aren't doing a lot of stuff behind the scenes and a lot of work behind these patches and updates and also let's talk about the DLC and update situation there's been multiple questions about these throughout the streams recently and of course I'm also considering that the company is also working on the next gen upgrade not just for cyberpunk but also for the witcher 3 so the big takeaway here is that all of the departments that deal with cyberpunk 2077 are fully focused on making that game much better meanwhile the ones that are on witcher 3 are focusing on that as well and there's not really much overlap from what i was able to tell it seems that the company is big enough to handle all of these projects at the same time and there's plenty of workforce right now on the game itself so yeah he was able to confirm that CD Projekt Red is busy working on the following when it comes to Cyberpunk 2077 so this includes brand new patches new DLCs and the next gen upgrade as well as I've talked about previously so yeah he can't really go into details about what these contain they will all be revealed when it's due time but um, rest assured that they are definitely working on a ton of new updates for the game in order to make it that much better uh, meanwhile the department that strictly work on Witcher 3 for example they will focus on the next gen upgrades and so on and so forth another big question was from a player who had over 200 hours into one of his playthroughs I'm pretty sure there's a lot of you out there in a similar situation and he felt that a city was so large when talking about Night City that City Project Red could make countless games using the same setting as a base and would it make sense to put more stories in it or would it make more sense to create new areas and whatnot so so if it was up to him, the lead quest designer mentioned that he would love to go in a similar route to Witcher 3, as in first release a lot of content patches and DLCs 
for free and second deliver big fat expansions that will most likely be paid if we are talking in the same context which is Witcher 3 which definitely followed that route I was talking about. So all in all looks pretty awesome he also went on to mention how is the current work situation over at the company so it seems that the majority of the teams are still working remotely because of the current ongoing events in the world but there are a lot of improvements being done on the office spaces for the developers to return to work in safe conditions once that is possible so I would assume that development cycles might ramp up even faster once that is possible and we should see things coming back on track once we get closer and closer to like 2022 I would presume but there's many other changes coming along the way as I've mentioned a lot of things that CD Projekt Red is currently not happy with when it comes to some of the stuff that is being put in the game like for example some of the RPG elements a um, physics engine like the water and whatnot and a few more on top that we will discuss in this video so when asking about cut content one of the main questions was in regards of the wall running as we had it at one of the E3's in 2019 I believe yeah at back then Cyberpunk 2077 still had wall running with the usage of Mantis Blades which unfortunately was later completely removed from the game well there is actually a pretty good explanation for why that was the case and it's not because they couldn't do it they definitely did it and were able to put it in practice but there's a different reason for why they had to scrap it down and the real reason is how limiting that proved to be on the environmental design and art point of view. So he gave a pretty compelling explanation. So they played around with this mechanic for a bit and they soon came to realize that they would need to strip a lot of walls and surfaces of a lot of the decorations and the building parts they normally have right now in the game like many of the very busy city areas and many of the busy cityscapes. Yeah, those are filled with billboards, with balconies, with AC units and many other decorations and unfortunately they would need to remove Remove many of these meshes so that the player can navigate these walls and not collide with them. The second reason was from a practical point of view, which another developer came in and uh, gave an even better explanation, which uh, kind of confirms that double jumping was already achieving most of the stuff that, yeah, that wall running was supposed to anyway, which was just reaching higher up places. You can easily reach higher up places with just a double jump or maybe with the hover boots. Both of these work really well so eventually they decided to work in the favor of making the city and the environment a lot more impactful rather than just adding a mechanic that can easily be bypassed by a different one. The next bit is not so much about a feature being cut but rather a feature not working fully which would be um, the water in the game and it completely lacking physics of any means and according to the lead quest designer again CD Projekt Red definitely knows about it, definitely has a plan about about it and they are definitely not happy about the current way water works in the game. Also a funny bug in the game by the way if you make phone calls it literally freezes the water in place and the animation of it completely stops. There's been somebody who posted that recently but um, if this was an easy solution CD Projekt Red would have definitely implemented it a long time ago. What you need to know right now is that this topic of the water physics is tied to the general performance of the game and yeah eventually it's probably gonna be implemented in some kind of patch fix upgrade that will also maybe um, improve performance a little bit more and maybe fix some of the other engine issues that exist in the game. Um, speaking of issues in design and whatnot let's talk about some upcoming RPG changes that were talked about um, especially when it comes to the healing uh, the healing mechanic in the game which essentially it is now press X to live and that's a pretty funny way of putting it but it's actually true well one thing he could mention is the fact that um, the RPG team over at CD Projekt Red is definitely involved into working on a ton of upcoming updates not just on this issue but on many other issues regarding RPG elements and features in Cyberpunk 2077 so if you have any grievance with some of the systems in the game it's very likely that CD Projekt Red knows of it and it's actively working on it to improve it much much more now the final one that I will talk about in this video is in regards 
to some of the character design decisions in the game. Of course, um, the lead quest designer talked about a lot of these design decisions throughout his streams, but particularly I want to talk about Takemura and why he is not a love interest in the game. And it seems that CD Projekt Red knew from the very beginning what kind of character Takemura would be. And from the very beginning, he is supposed to take the role of this Ronin, a samurai that lost his master. And the question about Takemura being a love interest has been actually been asked internally a lot, even more so by people who were testing the game actively back before release. But throughout many of the discussions that the teams had internally, they reached the conclusion that it wouldn't feel right for him as a character, for his role in the game and in the overall story to be worried about becoming a love interest as that would probably make it quite weird, especially for certain types of players who chose different life paths that might conflict a little bit with the way Takemura behaves. In a way, he's still servant to Saburo Arasaka, the lead quest designer has mentioned, so that, yeah, it, it doesn't really make sense and it would be weird to kind of make him a love interest for V, no matter what setting he would have been in. He also mentions later on that not every character in a video game needs to be romanceable, it's perfectly okay for some characters to just serve a different purpose in there, which I believe Takemura serves perfectly when it comes to the main story overall. Um, of course, this is not it by the way, as I've said, go ahead and check out the streams if you want to. Um, a big takeaway here is that CD Projekt Red right now is really motivated to make the game much better. Also the recent influx of players, especially following the relisting on the PlayStation Network, has definitely gave them more confidence when it comes to players and their engagement into the overall story of the game. It seems that the fan base is definitely alive and people really want to play this game a lot more. It's just that they're also looking for a lot more upgrades, updates and improvements to the game entirely. This is it with the recent news, of course, totally let me know down below what's your current plans with Cyberpunk 2077, are you playing it, are you taking a break, did you come back or are you still planning to keep on a break? Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.